What's up YouTube fans? Today we're going to take a look at the Fans Toys FT55B Erase, Loudspeaker, and Amplifier. Their version of the Masterpiece Tapes for Fans Toys Recorder, also known as Eject, Steeljaw, and Ramhorn. So we finally have the tapes all complete here. And it's kind of interesting. They actually put these out relatively quickly compared to the figure itself. So we pretty much have the full set here. And we'll take a look at all of them. We did already get this guy, which is there. They call him Fast Forward, <laughs> which is funny because his name is Rewind. Uh, but you get this guy as well. So you now have all four tapes. Now one thing I'll point away right point out right away is they did the tape paint a slightly differently. You can see there's gold here on these little inner edges, whereas this one is black. I think that was just a mistake. They forgot to paint it on this black one. So I'm glad they fixed that. It would be nice if there was a way, like a sticker, a gold sticker or something, to correct that. But there you go, you have all the tapes. Um, they do look pretty good. This one is pretty much the same other than the fact that it's blue instead of black. Back looks exactly the same. Here's this one. This got a little bit of silver paint here for the wheels. And both sides are pretty much symmetrical. Same for Ramhorn. You got the silver for the wheels there for the tape. And they are symmetrical as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Not too much to say here in the tape mode. You do get these tape covers. One of them does have this yellow dot on it. I really don't know why, because they're all the same. They're exactly the same size. So it will fit, uh, steel gel will fit in any of these tape covers. It doesn't really matter. And any of the others will also fit in there. So not really sure what that's about, but you do get the tape covers. I don't think anyone's displaying these in their tape covers. But it's nice that they gave that to you if you prefer to display it like that. And of course, what good would the tapes be if you couldn't put them in the tape deck here inside a recorder? So you can open up the chest here by just pressing down on that button. Then we're going to do depress this door there. That'll allow you to fit two tapes in there. I'm just going to take these two. So you can take ram horn, put that in there, and that'll just fit inside. Then you can take steel jaw, put him on the door. They both fit in there. It does definitely add to the weight of this guy because they're really solid die cast. I actually forgot to mention that. All the tapes are pretty much filled with die cast. Not 100%, but there's a lot. So it does add to the heft of this guy. Now to get them out of there, you're going to hit the eject button again. That'll eject one. Then you're going to close this. Come to the back here. Press the button. That'll slide him forward. And then you can eject him. That's the, the series. They, it does work perfectly uh, compared to the DS one, the deformation space. That one actually had some trouble with that mechanism. So there you go for the tape deck. It works perfectly. And for a quick size comparison, there it is next to the MP10 Optimus Prime and the deformation space recording alliance, their version of Blaster. And I know I'm going to get this question, so I decided to just answer it. Do these tapes fit in recording alliance? The answer is yes. So if you open up the tape, now I wouldn't push this chest piece in and try to put a second one in there because that mechanism tends to get stuck and you'll probably scrape up the paint. But you can at least put one in there. They do fit in the chest. They're actually smaller and they fit better than the DS tape, which is kind of funny. Uh, and here's another comparison. Here's the DS tape. And we'll show them in the, you know, alt modes as well. But I definitely think the Fans Toys tape looks a lot better. It's also just better quality but there you go for comparison but yes you can put the tapes in there I don't recommend putting two tapes in there but they do fit just fine but there you go for size comparison all right now let's get these guys transformed into their robot modes and we'll start with this guy because it is basically the same as before so I'm going to go through it pretty quickly go ahead and open up these and you'll notice they have that little gold piece there which completes the chest bring the legs down fold down this panel rotate them I'm going to take this foot, rotate it all the way around to the other side, rotate it 180 degrees, and then bring it back down. Take the little gun piece out, just set that aside for now. Same on this side, bring this down, rotate, fold the back piece down, take out the gun piece, rotate the foot to the other side, and then we'll rotate these to the back. Bring the arms down, 
Come to the back, we can pop out the head, rotate that around, extend at the waist until you get the actual lock click mechanism. We can fold out the hands from in here. And last piece here is to assemble the gun. So we're going to take the gun and we'll just set him like that. We're going to open up the handle here. This can be a little bit annoying or tricky, but basically you can open that up. You're going to take this part of the gun right here, the little peg. That's going to fit into here like that. And that's kind of the shape of the gun. And I forgot to extend the arms here, but let's take a look at Ramhorn here, or they call him Amplifier. And his transformation is actually probably the worst of the three, but let's do that. So go ahead and fold the tail back. We're going to open up these legs. Now the legs are the biggest problem with this, is trying to get these back. These are going to slide outwards and backwards on a mechanism here and it's actually hard to get it out the first time so I recommend I recommend getting a spudger and getting it right in here in between and that'll give you a little bit of space to push this back on the slider just that amount is enough to now get it out of there but without that you're gonna have a hard time getting this back but you're basically gonna slide this whole thing back on the slider and you can see it's kind of Kind of tough, but you should end up with a slot right here. So it actually slid out in this way. So same thing on this side, you know, to get it started, especially if this is your first transformation, I reckon a spudger, get that in there and get it separated. Once you get it separated with that, then you can push it back with your fingers, but it's really hard to get in there on the first transformation, especially, right? So pull those back. And then we can take the foot, fold that down on both sides. And that's basically it for these back legs. And sometimes I like to fold back in, which is why I said I'm not, it's my favorite transformation. All right, then we're going to take the legs here, we're going to fold these down at the feet. We're going to take this panel here, this is going to slide outwards and forwards on a slider. Outwards and backwards, I'm sorry. And you can see there's a double hinge right there. Now you're going to take the head and you can just get a fingernail right here and pull that forward. That'll bring the whole head down. Rotate these all to the front and open them up a little bit to the outside. Take these panels here, fold those up, and then we can fold that back, like that. And while you're in here, I recommend a spudger again to help you grab this panel right here. So you're just folding that panel upwards, and that's going to connect to the other side. But make sure you fold that all the way up. And then we can fold this out too. And then this is going to come together. This tab is going to go through the other side. See, there's a little slot right there. So line that up and get that through the slot. And you can kind of see it. It'll sit flush and fill that slot. All right? These two are just going to sit on the outside of these panels. They don't really peg in, but they just kind of sit there. So now let's take a look at their loudspeaker or steel jaw. So we're going to start by rotating these legs back and then rotating the feet downwards. It helps if you rotate the thighs first before pulling the feet down. They're actually pegged in right here on the bottom. Then we can take the tail here and it's actually kind of hidden right there but pull that up. Come to you here we're going to pull these down and we're going to accordion this thigh backwards. Same on this one, fold this down, then accordion this thigh backwards. There are two little pegs that are going to grab onto this panel right here. So get that lined up 
and pull that back. These are going to come rotate all the way down. And they're going to take the tail that's going to flip all the way to the other side. All right, so in this one, rotate that all the way down. It's on a double hinge. Then you're going to take this, fold that all the way back. Now I'll take care of the front. I'm going to open up these panels here on both sides, open them all the way up. Flip your head forward. You can slide this forward on this hinge. Unpeg the feet from here and bring those down. You're going to take this panel here that's going to fold underneath this panel. So you kind of get a double hinge, but you also have to make sure it's making its way under here. Then bring that leg down. Same on this side. Fold this up. Make sure it makes its way underneath right here. And then fold the leg down. Don't fold the leg all the way. You want the leg at an angle because you're going to bring this down and this wants to sit right on top and then you'll fold the leg over it. So leave that back like that. There's a peg right here that's going to go into a slot right there on both sides. So bring this down. Get that peg down on both sides. And make sure it's actually lined up. And once you get the main kind of pegged in, you're going to rotate this leg back around so it should sit on the outside of the main. All right, and there they are in their alt modes all together, finally together as a set. And they do look good. I do like the paint, the overall sculpt and details. Let's take a look at this guy first since it is basically identical with the exception of that little gold paint I mentioned on the chest. Here's the back. They do have a little bit of gappiness on the back, but that's to be expected with tapes like this. Um, I do like how they look. The twin brothers, their the face paint is slightly different colors. The articulation is the same, but just to demonstrate it, I will go over the head is on a rotating swivel. It can go up and down due to the transformation. Shoulders rotate around on a ball joint. They go up to there, down to there. You can slide it up and down. You have a double jointed elbow here. So you can get it bend it all the way up to there. Uh, nothing really at the wrist. It goes in and out for transformation. No waist rotation or anything like that. You have the leg goes up to there, back to there, out to the side. They did do it on a screw this time. So if it does start getting loose, you can tighten that. So that's, that's nice. Rotation at the thigh. Single jointed knee gets you 90 degrees. You have a ankle on a ball joint, so you can rock back and forward on the pivot. You can get side to side, and you can get forward and backwards. And that's it for this guy. Race. Let's move on to this guy. And amplifier does look good. They do have the silver paint there for the eyes. Sculpted horn, nose, ears, everything's there that you'd expect. The chrome, gold chrome there with the gray for the legs. All of that looks nice. The paint detail does look nice. I will say this one is probably the weakest just because the way they decided to do the rear legs, it's just kind of, it, it doesn't stay, so you're constantly messing with it. It's really good when it's posed. Uh, but it, once you start messing with it, it does kind of like collapse on you on these inners. Nothing to hold it outwards. The front part does stay, but like I showed you, the transformation is just not all that fun. As far as articulation, the neck itself can go up to there, down to there. And then the head is on a ball joint, so you get a little bit of side to side, up to there, and down to there. You can open the mouth. It opens a very tiny bit, just basically up to there and you can rotate the head side to side. This is a sharp horn, by the way, so just be careful with that. You can rotate these up and down, but it doesn't really add much. The legs can rotate back and forth here on a hinge, and then the toes can hinge as well. So if you wanted to get it in kind of a walking, you could. So that's nice. Rear legs can rotate here at this hinge, and like I mentioned, as you start manipulating this, it does tend to either collapse or just move this out of place. So not my favorite style of joint there. You have a rotation here at the ankle and then at the toe. The tail can go up and down. And that's basically it for this guy. 
And then we'll move on to loudspeaker here. And I think he's actually really good looking. I really like how this turned out. You got that nice kind of metallic yellow, the gold chrome here, the gunmetal for the legs, gunmetal here for the tape, painted yellow eyes. As far as articulation, the mouth does open all the way up to there. You get a head rotation. Uh, I believe it's on a ball joint, uh, but you can't get side to side out of that. The mane itself doesn't move like it did in the uh, MMC version. Legs can go rotate back and forth here. Just be careful. You want this to be on the outside of this, so make sure it doesn't end up stuck on the inside. You have a rotation here at the knee, and then a rotation at the ankle. So you can get the leg, you know, basically any direction. Get him walking, running, jumping, whatever you need. This wing can rotate back and forth. The tail can go down. It can't really go up any further than that. Hind legs can rotate all the way back to there forward to there, and then the knee can bend forward and backwards, and then the ankle can bend forward and backwards. And for a quick size comparison, there they all are together, the acoustic wave with its tapes and the recorder with its tapes, and they fit together nicely, and overall the paint scheme and just overall sculpting details, they do look like a matching set. Now as far as the tapes are concerned, I think my favorite is definitely still a laser beak uh, but Steel Jaw is my new second favorite. I just really like the way they did it. And for another comparison, I think people want to see, there it is next to the Ocular Max versions of Rewind and Steel Jaw. And I do think these guys look really good, especially kind of standalone pieces. They're great figures. Um, but me personally, I do think they're a little bit on the big side, especially when you put them next to any version of Blaster. They seem like they're just a little bit too big. Uh, but you can make it pass, it's especially Steel Jaw, I think, you know, you can kind of fit them in. So final recommendations on the Fans Toys Erase, Amplifier, and Loudspeaker. I'm going to give this set a 4 out of 5, I'm going to recommend it. I do like the way they look in their alt modes. All of them are pretty reasonable and fun to transform with the exception of Amplifier here. And they do look good in their alt modes. Um, as far as um, the weakness of the set I think it's this guy here the transformation is not fun just due to the way they did these joints here and then he is kind of panely and gappy compared to the others they're all pretty solid it's just this one I don't know it just doesn't feel like it's on the same level now it does look good kind of posed in there and I mean overall it's a nice looking ram horn but uh, it out of the set I think it's the weakness now, out of the tapes that we've gotten to date, in terms of the Masterpiece scale, we've gotten the KFC tapes, we've gotten the Deformation Space made the one tape, and then the only other ones we have, which I don't know if I should count, is Ocular Max. As far as the tapes that fit inside the chest of a Masterpiece figure, these are the best. I mean, there's no question in my mind that these are the best tapes. But when it comes to the... Ocula Max tapes, that kind of is a whole new ball game because they don't have the parameter of having to fit into a chest. So they have a lot more going on, more articulation. So it really depends what you want for your collection. Me personally, I like how these look with the Fans Toys Blaster overall as a set together. So I'm going to display it this way. But I'm still holding on to my Ocular Max figures just because they fit in in different places in my collection. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.